So the brownies that I'm making are going to be the epic brownies. They are <laughs> on page 48 in my cookbook. And I'm not going to be frosting these. I will put a little tiny bit of either powdered sugar or maybe I will put some sprinkles on top. But no frosting for Nick. Quite honestly. Oh, what am I doing? I have no idea why I just did that. I'm just so excited. Okay, what I need to do is melt my butter. Of course I need to melt the butter. I'm sure you all were like, what is she doing putting that butter in to make brownies? I'm just gonna get out a pot here and we're gonna put just like that. In between baking here, I'm also helping Maria with her schoolwork. So that's kind of how we homeschool around here. I have two thirds cup of unsweetened cocoa powder. I'm just gonna get that in and I put it right over top of the butter so that as the butter is melting, that can also uh, be kind of incorporating or melting into the butter. Okay, so now that the butter and the cocoa is all melted and everything, I like to put in the sugar next because that tempers the temperature, I guess, maybe I don't have to say it, that tempers it so that when I add in the four eggs, they don't start to cook. Because you don't want to have little yellow cooked yolk bits in your brownies. I like to start stirring that right away. Come on, there we go. put in a teaspoon of vanilla and I like to sprinkle the flour kind of over the whole thing here so I don't have to sift and then I just sprinkle a half teaspoon of baking powder and a half teaspoon of salt over top of the flour and then just stir that in and that's it homemade brownies are so easy to make So I just put those in for 25 minutes. I know the recipe says 30 minutes, but I always like to go a little bit less just in case because each of my like nine by 13 pans are all just a tiny bit different. And um, you know, if they're thicker or thinner, you just don't want to over, over bake them. So 25 minutes and then I'll check them, see if they need to go a little bit longer. But that's that. Now we're going to move on to making some muffins. So last week I made some blueberry muffins that were really, really good. And I thought I'm going to make some more of those. And I'm going to use that same recipe to also make just some plain old chocolate chip muffins. So I just pulled out all of the ingredients to get the muffins going. And so for the muffins, what I found works really well so that they don't end up getting over mixed is to just use two bowls or whatever it is that you want to use. And I'm just going to have one here where I'm going to have the wet ingredients and another bowl for the dry ingredients. In here, we're going to put one cup of milk, a half a cup of oil, and two eggs. my sifter a lot again I'm not really sure what makes me decide that I want to go back to this but anyway I have been <laughs> so that was three cups of flour a cup of sugar this gets pretty full so I'm gonna sift just a little bit put the rest of the sugar in and then we are going to do a teaspoon of salt, which you're actually sitting on the salt right now. Let's go like this. Get you balancing somewhere else. So a teaspoon of salt. And then we need to do four teaspoons of baking powder. I actually have a tablespoon right here, so I'll just do a tablespoon because that's three teaspoons and another teaspoon. What? Can you bring eggs from the refrigerator in the garage? Sure. <laughs> you couldn't hear me? 
we're just going to get this all sifted. I'm just going to add the wet. I'm just going to mix this lightly. Come on. Yes. We don't want sugar, sugar by the food. Take sugar away from the food, okay, Joe? I know. Isn't she cute, though? Get it. A, get the camera a little further back, then we can see her. How pretty she is. <laughs> I think she wants the strap on my camera. Sh sugar. Okay, honey. It's, it's too blurry. Okay, ma. Isn't she cute? Yeah. Okay, you have to take her out of the kitchen. So the last time I made these. Uh, the recipe calls for two cups of blueberries, and immediately Sam bit into one, and he's like, okay, you need to put way more blueberries. So you have to be kind of careful because you don't want to get too much moisture, and then it takes too long to bake, and then the edges get too dark. So I'm going to go with the two cups, but I am going to throw in some extras. So there's a good two cups of blueberries. Let's go two and a half today. For me. You're making a card? Yeah. Okay, make Nick a card. And I'm just kind of turning this over, folding it, because I don't want to mix this. If you over mix your muffins, I know I've said this before to you all. Yes? Yeah, card green. Green uh, paper. You need green paper? Yeah. It's out in the second schoolroom closet. Go oh. to the second closet. Okay. But I know I have said this before that if you over mix quick breads and muffins, you will get kind of like a little pointy top instead of a nice rounded top. So don't over mix. That's one reason why actually sifting your ingredients or even mixing the dry ingredients and then just forking them together before you add in the wet ingredients is pretty important with a lot of different muffin recipes. Okay, that looks just right. And this recipe makes 24 muffins, so you just want to keep that in mind. Just make them as even as you possibly can. And since I'm using such a dark pan, I'm going to set my oven to 375 degrees now. If I were to be using a light colored muffin tin, I would set it to 400 degrees. I just pulled the brownies out. They were puffed, they looked dry, they in the center like that, you know, like the, not dried out, but I mean the, the crust on top has a dry appearance, shiny like that. That means they're done. Once these are cooled, I will sprinkle some powdered sugar on and those will be epic brownies. Now, if you like a frosted brownie, like a cold frosted brownie. <laughs> Can you tell that that's what I like? Um, I do have a recipe for a cocoa frosting. It's like a kind of a whipped light brown frosting. It's so yummy on these. So anyway, yeah, do that if you like frosting. So for the next batch of muffins, which is which are going to be chocolate chip muffins, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm doing like a little experiment here. So it calls for a cup of milk. I'm using the same recipe, but I want to see if I can use dry milk instead of regular milk. It's a lot less expensive. Um, it's something that you can do even if you don't have milk in the house. So I have, what it says on my powdered milk is that you need seven ounces of water with one quarter cup of the milk. So I'm going to get the milk mixed into here and whisk it with a fork and then we're going to pour that in and hopefully um, this works out just the same because yeah. like I'm always looking for ways that I for recipes that work well To just use powdered milk What is powdered milk? Is it just the dry stuff in milk and then you just add water to it and yeah. then it makes milk? Yeah Is it just like milk? Does it taste like milk? Similar I think it's gonna taste fine in Muffins, in muffins yeah. it Smells good fork on the counter. That's fine. Mm -hmm. What else are going to put in hard. two cups of chocolate chips and instead of blueberries. And like pouring things. Mm -hmm. Didn't you make blueberries? I did. Muffins? I made blueberry muffins and now we're making chocolate chip. You know, we're going to start with one cup because I feel like that might be enough. I think a cup of chocolate chips is going to be plenty. Yeah. 
I think there's plenty. Yeah, we got a little bit of powder in here still. Puffed, puffed, puffed. So for the chocolate chip muffins here, I want to make little mini ones. I didn't think this, that blueberry would be a good candidate for making the mini ones just because the blueberries are a little bit big. And if you end up taking a scoop and you don't really get a blueberry in it, eh. Who wants that? But since these blueberries, or since these chocolate chips are tiny, they spread out more in here, in the batter. So this is gonna work out well. Now mini muffins oftentimes only have to bake for sometimes like six or seven minutes. It's sometimes even less. I'm also gonna make some of these great big jumbo muffins. We have the blueberry over here, and then the jumbo and the mini are all the chocolate chip ones. I do think that the fresh milk does make them a little bit more tender. These seem just a little bit tougher than, um, you know, than the blueberry ones. Anyway, you can see everybody was tying into the chocolate chip ones, though. They really like those. And the jumbo muffins, I've been trying my... Uh, you, I, I've been making jumbo muffins since I bought this jumbo muffin pan, I think last summer when I was uh, doing some baking with Amber. And I don't know, I'm just not really into the jumbo muffin pans. I feel like you have to bake them so long to get the inside done, and then the outside is almost a little bit just too firm. So still my favorite is to just do regular size muffins and serve them warm. That always seems to be the best. Nick, should I make a <laughs> Hold wish? Hold on, I'm thinking. Look at Joe. Make a wish, thinking. Thinking. <laughs> now. That was a serious oh, oh, wish. Oh, oh, oh. Hey! Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> there we go. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, with the assist. Well, good morning. I'm back into the kitchen to continue on with this bake with me. And this morning, I am going to get honey wheat bread going in my bread machine. I don't like bread machine baked bread, but I do utilize my bread machine for the dough cycle all the time. So this recipe is in my cookbook. It is on page 35. And here we go in case you do want to take a screenshot. There it is for you. Sorry for the shadows. Maybe that's a little bit better. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to get um, my milk and water. And what I like to do, I'm going to get really, really hot water just from the tap. I'm going to mix that with my one and a third cups of cold milk. And that's going to be my warmish uh, liquid that I put into my bread machine. Then I'm just going to put everything else in, the honey, the butter, the whole wheat flour. I only have a little bread flour today, maybe a quarter cup, so I'll just uh, substitute in regular um, all-purpose flour today. It'll be fine. And then a teaspoon of salt and one and a fourth teaspoons of yeast. I might up that just like a heaping one and a fourth teaspoon of yeast since I don't have um, a lot of bread flour. Yeah, that's a lot of times what I do. If I'm using bread flour, I go exactly the yeast. If I don't have enough bread flour on hand, I'll just up the yeast a tiny bit. I'm going to get everything into my bread pan here, set my um, bread machine to dough, and then come back in, I think it's an hour and 30 or an hour and 40 minutes, and then I will shape it into a loaf. I will come back in about five minutes and just check to make sure that this has enough moisture in it. 
I'll show you what it looks like and tell you if I'm going to add more or not. I did get a little sidetracked packaging up cookbooks and I forgot to come back over here and double check this but I just opened it now and that actually looks really good. It looks soft. It looks still a little bit moist on top. That's just what I want it to look like. If it would have looked dry or uh, if it would have had like a lot of flour that hadn't been mixed in yet, I would have added one or two or three teaspoons of warm water uh, to the bread pan, but this would be too late. You have to do it when it's still in the mixing phase because now it's already in the rising phase. Oh, poor birdie just hit the window. Uh, it's now in the rising phase and it's not going to mix. You know, the water's not going to mix in. The bread is all done. I'm just putting a little bit of olive oil on the counter here. I'm going to dump out my bread. Oh, that looks beautiful. Looks very moist. Try to roll up my sleeves a little bit here. I'm just gonna knead this a couple times. I just like to work in a little of that olive oil. I think bread with olive oil tastes so good. The bread pan I'm using today is actually kind of an extra large or extra long, it's long and narrow. And so I'm just going to get my bread pulled, my bread, my dough pulled, kind of long-ish. And I'm just going to roll it up tightly. I don't want any air bubbles in it. And that is it. Let's get it over here. And that's what it looks like in the bread pan. I'm just going to cover it with a dish towel. And then I'm going to set this just kind of over by the sunshine on a chair. And I'm going to let it rise like that. I'm going to come back in 30 minutes and check it. All right, we just had a visitor. And so I got carried away talking. And oh my goodness, my bread... Don't touch it, Joe, okay? We don't want it to fall. It's very, very risen. So I just started my oven to 350 degrees. As soon as that preheats, we are going to carefully put this in. Have you ever put bread in the oven too uh, forcefully and then all the air comes out and it sinks? That Three is degrees. such a bummer. 350 degrees. Can you say that? 350 degrees. 350. 350 degrees. Awesome. That's what we're going to do. So we're going to wait. It's probably going to take about, I don't know, five to seven minutes before we can put that in. Check to make sure it feels hollow. Uh -huh. This little bit longer pan, I only had to go 28 minutes instead of the recommended 30 to 35 minutes just because, you know, this is narrower, it's longer. I also like to put a little bit of butter on top of the crust. I think it just gives it really, really good flavor. So usually when it first comes out, I will just do this. Now this is another one of those areas that we are split in our family. Half the family likes it to um, be left real crunchy and the other half likes it a little more of a soft top. And so I try to just do it like every other time when I make bread just to try to keep everybody happy. <laughs> I'm going to let this rest in the pan for about five to eight minutes and then I will take it out to cool completely. 